Just a reminder from your friendly neighborhood metalhead, if you like what you see, don't forget to click like and subscribe to The Heavy Underground. 20 years ago, on the nights of April 22nd and 23rd, 1999, the chart-smashing thrash masters Metallica entered the Berkeley Community Theater alongside the San Francisco Orchestra to record their groundbreaking s and collaboration. Released on November 23rd of the same year, the band played an additional two s and shows to support this release, on November 19th in Berlin, Germany with the Berlin Symphony Orchestra, and November 22nd in New York City at Madison Square Garden with the Orchestra of St. Luke. For nearly two decades, these concerts have marked an iconic milestone for the band, and with a major 20th anniversary at hand, March 18th, 2019 brought an announcement from the band and orchestra that they will celebrate this major event, as well as the opening of San Francisco's latest faceless corporate arena by holding court for an unexpected redux of these historic concerts with the aptly named s and 2. Initially announced for September 6, 2019 as a one-night-only open-to-the-world event, a major online disruption with the brief fifth-member fan club ticket presale led to the announcement of a second, even more unexpected, fifth-member-only show on September 8th. Not wanting to miss the largest Metallica fan club gathering in history, I entered my name in the lottery to purchase tickets and was graciously afforded the opportunity to attend this monumental event. An onrush of adrenaline races through the crowd when the San Francisco Orchestra brings a Neo Morricone's triumphantly powerful The Ecstasy of Gold to rousing life. With a surge of pomp and power, The Ecstasy of Gold blares triumphantly into the night as a massive roar greets the hometown horsemen while they make their way to the stage. Instruments in hand, the mass of musicians soon drop the crowd to mo the monstrously crushing depths with the Call of Cthulhu. Both band and symphony circle with sinister malevolence on this timeless instrumental. Cthulhu's hefty interdimensional destruction completed, the band keeps the focus squarely on 1984's Ride the Lightning with the nimble bombast of For Whom the Bell Tolls, featuring a reserved symphonic drawdown. For Whom the Bell Tolls' more gentle ending offers a shift to the post-traumatic onrush of 2008's The Day That Never Comes. Twisting with fleet-fingered dexterity, The Day That Never Comes soon propels into the air with a frantic intensity as the band delve into their recent catalog of emotive and expressive tracks to run the already emotional fifth-member crowd through the ringer. Next, crowd favorite The Memory Remains begins with a sweeping chug before a rousing sing-along from the voracious crowd soon rivals the band for overall volume. Sure enough, the song's final crowd sing-along finds our favorite congenial Dane flummoxed at the crowd's vocal stamina as the fifth-member choir serenades the band for a full minute to ensure that the memory does remain. Offering a post-traumatic postscript to the earlier impact of The Day That Never Comes, Hardwired to Self-Destruct's insightful confusion follows as an essential coda with the symphony keeping an understated watch around the edges of this 2016 track with James's deep and resonant lyrics taking prominence. Keeping with the flow of new music, another hardwired track lines up next. Moth into Flame springs from the stage with an agile blitz as the San Francisco Orchestra keep up with the fleet-fingered pace. Moth's final moments blur together in white-hot speed as the band and symphony race with a frantic abandon. An amazing run of grandiose depth closes out the first set with a masterful triad of The Outlaw Torn, No Leaf Clover, and Halo on Fire. A pair of rarely played cuts, Outlaw and Clover, reach out from the deep recesses of the live vault, evoking an overwhelming response from the assembled faithful. While 2016's Halo on Fire proudly declares its place in the band's songbook of truly epic classics with the night's powerfully evocative performance. Bringing the first set to a close, this triumvirate of songs leads into the intermission with an infinitely memorable stretch of music etched into the mind.
Beginning the second set, the heavy metal drum maestro Lars Ulrich takes to the stage to introduce the San Francisco Symphony's musical director Michael Tilson Thomas for a quick conversation on the exploration of thematic elements and overarching concepts in classical music and their parallels in heavy metal music. Focusing on two of the multitudes of isms found in classical music, Maestro Thomas lauds the symphony for having not only the chops to play this music, but the guts and spirit as well. Bold experimentation follows with a pair of illuminating selections that trace the classical approaches of primitivism and futurism to the elements of heavy music that correlate to these schools. A procession of bold musical formations take the spotlight throughout this highly experimental second set. Beginning with the tribal thunder of primitivism, the orchestra by itself roars through a selection of Sergei Prokofiev's 1915 composition, Scythian Suite, a bombastic ride of grand, far-reaching vistas and stunning power, the tattooed, horse-riding Scythian culture provides a more than appropriate touchstone for a heavy metal comparison. Up next, Maestro Thomas touches on the school of futurism as the members of Metallica rejoin the orchestra for a modern metal grind through Alexander Mazalov's Iron Foundry. Halting momentum and an abrasive edge, this mid-1920s piece can barely contain the tension between traditional technique and mechanized aggression represented by such a clash of styles and era. As three quarters of the band leave the stage, James remains behind to join the symphony for a breathtaking rendition of The Unforgiven Three. With the strength of the orchestra at his back, Brother Hetfield takes to the microphone to bare his soul with grace and eloquence for an astounding rendition of this 2008 aural rumination. With a rousing round of applause fading into the night, yet another configuration takes over the stage with Lars, Kirk, and Rob returning, joined by the band's right-hand man, Avi Vinicure. All with acoustic instruments in tow, the band and their dozens and dozens of new bandmates prepare for a stripped-down acoustic version of All Within My Hands. Elevating the reinterpreted acoustic version of this track to another depth of expression, the symphony only bolsters the insidious shadow cast by this reimagined St. Anger standout. Providing a capstone to the experimental portion of the night's program, San Francisco's resident bass maestro Scott Pingle takes to the stage, brandishing an electric stand-up bass and an array of effect pedals at his feet to pay tribute to the bass visionary Cliff Burton with an expressive and impeccable take on Cliff's legendary bass solo, Anesthesia Pulling Teeth. Joining in for an old-school slam-down, Lars joins Brother Pingle to run Anesthesia to its true roaring end. A phenomenal experience, Scott Pingle levels the audience with his overwhelming tone and expressive delivery in a mind-bending tribute to one of the most uniquely gifted artists of all time. A flourish of heaviness follows the emotional heft of anesthesia as Wherever I May Roam, One, and Master of Puppets pour from the stage in reverse chronology. Kirk, with a noticeable grin, opens Wherever I May Roam with a sitar in hand before the band launch into this road-tested classic as the crowd once again proves that they know every word to every song in energetic fashion. As stark and crisp drum hits herald the opening salvo of 1988's One, Lars joins in on the fun as the rhythm section wraps out a staccato machine gun run to open the song. Racing to its frantic closing moments, one soon gives way to the uncontrollable surge of Master of Puppets. A noticeable and neo Morricone flair rises to the fore most exceptionally in Master of Puppets' reworked orchestral backing. Michael Tilson Thomas's 2019 updates to some of the orchestral accompaniments make a conspicuous difference on these two songs as 1985's epic Master of Puppets evokes a mournful spaghetti western with a pensive trumpet call lacing throughout the song's second half and one boasting a surprise nod to the band's 2014 collaboration with Chinese pianist Lang Lang on this affecting 88 classic. The iconic and stirring one-two punch of Nothing Else Matters and the eternally expected Enter Sandman soon rise up to close out the show. With Nothing Else Matters drawing everyone together in jubilant celebration, a final reflective moment rises in the newly minted Chase Center before the spirited roll of Enter Sandman sends everyone home on a familiar rush of adrenaline.
the band concludes their thank you and goodbye rounds, the arena slowly empties. Over 17,000 Metallica fans spilling into the street, having witnessed an amazing night of heavy metal mastery and virtuosic orchestral excellence. <laughs>